there in a different way. So if you want to update, use execute update and put the query. And if you want to get data, execute the query. The difference is that when you want to get data, you get the data in a in a Java Java data, the data structure. So this data structure, uh, its class is called result set. So you have to declare this, and you will get um, all the data that satisfies your statement in this data structure. So what is a result set? So uh, the result set object is a list of tuples that satisfy your query. It's a view of the database on your Java virtual machine. And it looks like the table, but just those rows that satisfy the query we have designed. You see? So if we design this query, let's select all rows from flight's table where arriving is Charles de Gaulle Airport in, in Paris. You will get this view of the database in the result set object, right? So we have this, this object, but we want to exploit this data. We want to do something with this data. We want to put it on a screen. We want to change the identification number. We want to put new departure types. So how shall we proceed? So result set has a method called next. Uh, what it does, this is a pointer to each row of the table to have retrieved. Um, so you, we normally will put it on an iteration because uh, the result of applying this method is a Boolean value. So it will give us a true value while the pointer shows to some data. If the pointer is, you know, comes to the end of the rows, we'll give true. So uh, that will mean that you, you, we don't have more data to process. So in the beginning, when you get the visual set and you do for the first time RS next, your pointer is zero. But once you do once, it goes to the first one, and you will be able to get the attributes, the columns on this row. So every time we do R next, we go to the next row, next row, next row. And so on until R as next is out of the bounds and it will give a false Boolean value, right? So once we are we have the pointer in a determined row, we want to get we don't want to get the whole row, but maybe we want to get some specific values. I want to get the, um, the ID number of these flights to Paris. I want to get the departure time. We don't care about the ID time. So the result set object has some methods that allow us to retrieve this specific piece of data. So um, if we want to get the flight ID, and we know that in the database this is declared as a string, we just say, OK, in this RS object, let's get the string and its attribute name is flight ID. And you will get this value here and the departure time here. And this for each row where you iterate. Tap, tap. So let's see how this again works in a real example. Let's go back the NetBeans project. I will take out the update. Let's focus on information retrieval. So I have this um, this sentence is the same as the one seen on this on the slides. Uh, I make use of the classes and the methods I mentioned. And what I do once I retrieve the attributes I want from each row, each, each row, I just print on the screen that flight, flights from Manchester to Paris, departure at departure time, and they have this by right? So I save, I execute. result we get. So flights from Manchester to Paris, departure at 
seven type code, etc. And this is what we get from our database. So we made the connection, we got the pointer to the database, <coughs> we got the data. And now, if you are working with a server, what you can do is to embed this, this, uh, this data within HTML tags. And this is what would, what would you get on, on the screen as a user. So, okay, we are in the end of the life cycle. We have connected, we have tried to update the database, we have retrieved the data, and now we want to disconnect. We are done with our application, so it's this easy. Just in the object connection we have declared, just close the connection, and we are done. So, don't forget, because for clarity reasons, I removed here the error handling sentence. But do not forget, obviously. Otherwise, you will not be able to compile and run your code, right? So, for connection update retrieval and disconnection sentences, always try to catch the SQL exception because there might be some problems in your SQL sentences, right? And just the general exception for looking up for the driver, and this is it. So, so far we have designed this for atomic methods to access the database. It's so very basic, but it's the one you have to use to do something with, with your data. The, the thing is that Java and JDBC uh, belong to the object-oriented paradigm. Um, for the sake of, let's do the things in the right way. Let's be good engineers. Let's apply design patterns. Let's do the things in the right way so that the code is efficient and works perfectly and it can be checked and it can be updated. Let's, why don't we encapsulate this method in the class and make it independent of the application? So regardless what kind of data do you want to update, what kind of data would you want to retrieve from the database, let's keep it simple and put these basic um, methods within a static class so that other classes can make use of it. And how it looks like. So, it's just the methods I've shown you so far. But these are independent of the host, of the port, of the user, of the database name. So, if there's a class calling to this method, um, this class should make use of these um, methods using is its specific requirements for the host, for the core, for the thing user, for the query to update the database, and for the query to, re to retrieve. So this is a very simple class that allows you to access from any application to a Java database, through JDBC, of course. So as I mentioned, we have this uh, static class that encapsulates these basic accessing methods. And we will have some other classes that make use of each one. So the goal when we design in such a way is to, to disclose the, the complexity, to hide the, the complexity. So we could put all the source code in one class. I show you, it's, it's all in one class. So, this works, you've seen that this works, but come on, let's be elegant and let's do it in, a, in the right way, right? That's over in the years. So there will be some other classes that will define the queries and will define how to retrieve the data from the database. So, in this, application, you have, we have an airport that uh, connects to a database manager. And this database manager has some methods implemented. Um, you can get the list of the flights. You can add a delay if you have um, the code of the flight. 
you can add a new destination in the database, you can update the arrival time, and so on. But you never change this, right? The only thing you change is the database manager, which is the class in between the main class and this basic um, method, right? So how does the database manager look like? So this is up to you. I mean, depending on your requirements in your application, the database manager will uh, define different methods. But we want to get the list of flights. I want to add a delay, for instance. So how we deal with this status class? So first of all, we have, we have to define, have to import the, the class, make a reference to it. And then it's just that easy. We have to connect, giving the proper host or user password according to our requirements, and then we, we will retrieve according to the um, SQL sentence we define, and then we'll disconnect. We connect, update, disconnect, depend, no matter which um, method we are designing, we always make use of these three classes. Don't forget about the rest, yeah? So, Let's see how this can be seen in a, in a real world project. So as opposed to this uh, long piece of code, I designed the same application following this parameter. So we have the main class. Look what simple it is. Just main class that we call to the database manager. The database manager is a couple of methods that will do the, um, that will deal with the database. And we'll make use of this basic accessing method, which is retrieve, update, disconnect. So in this way, we this goes in line with what Carla mentioned this morning it's about this question of concern. Leave the database handling on one side and let's exploit the data from the database in another site, right, and which will be done by the database manager. Um, what we do here is, okay, we are making use of the database manager, and we want to get the list of flights that uh, go to Charles de Gaulle Paris. So it makes use of get list of flights. We put the arrival code in the main class, and we, let's see how it works. But instead of having one class, we have three different classes. And the, um, the modularity of the whole system is high. And so let's see what are the benefits of using this way of designing. So reusability is boosted because this class that makes use of the basic atomic sentences. Uh, you, have, you don't have to touch it. You only have to touch it at this manner. So this example I've shown you. This one. I just copied this from my uh, software engineering classes when I took the class in 2004. I've been making use of it since 2004. It's been eight years making use of this. I didn't change it at all. And I've been developing Java programs eight years. So make sure you make a good one and keep it in your pocket. Yeah, because it's not easy. Yeah. You should use that for Yeah. <laughs> so complexity is hidden. You see how, OK, you have three different classes, but um, the concerns are separated. The code is way cleaner. You don't have to know this is spaghetti. Uh, code, the whole, whole stuff in one class, and it's very difficult to get to things and separate things. Uh, of course, if we follow the object oriented paradigm, we get higher modularity, and by far it has a greater maintenance. You can make updates more easily, so on. So, all the examples we've seen here are um, stored in my local machine and don't make use of the network. 
controls by database was hosted in the local host. But what's the role of JTBC and database access in this class of web applications? So this pattern keeps the same. The only thing that changes is that the main class is a server now. So it just inherits all the methods of the server, which is the init method, the destroy method, and the to get. But in the end, the backbone is still the same. So no, no matter if you are using a mobile application, you are using an applet, you are using a servlet, it's much the same. So the only thing that changes is that, okay, now we have, we can play around with a, a web server, and we have some data from the database. We can put it on HTML and show, show it. And of course, it's more interactive and more easy to, to use for the user, and it's more reachable because we all have the universal client, which is the, the browser the of developing an application, you know? And since it is Java, you can use it in any machine. So, yeah, as mentioned, and coming back to the, to the example I tried to explain in the beginning, uh, you can retrieve the data and put this data on the template. Or if you want to book a flight, put the data regarding flights onto the template in the in the in the servlet. Um, I just to, to, to finish, just I would want to let you know that this is a very widespread example. These days, databases or sorry, uh, web applications by definition are not static anymore, and they make heavy use of databases. They heavily rely on databases. So uh, this is something you have to keep in mind and, you know, and please try to, to make use of these good practices and, and, and keep this, this class for you <laughs> because it will be very useful for you in the, in the, in the future if you are developing Java applications. Um, for the class, for the, for the lab in this, in this, um, in this afternoon, we are not we are not following this design pattern for, for the sake of simplicity and because maybe some of you are not familiar with object oriented program. But still some of you that you know that you can still try to do it and you know you will get higher marks for <laughs> um, yeah so this is it. So you should have any questions. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mokash. Um, 